How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be doing inside and outside corners in vinyl or rubber cove base. This video is brought to you and sponsored by Tools for Flooring and EJ Welch. Tools for Flooring is the number one online store for flooring tools and supplies. EJ Welch has 25 locations across the United States, so there's sure to be one near you. To start off with, we are going to do our outside corners first. That seems to be what most people have trouble with, so we'll go ahead and put it right in the front of the line, okay? So we are working with a four and a half inch black vinyl cove base in this video. So I'm gonna take my cove base and just place it up against the wall, and I wanna take my utility knife, and I'm gonna put just a scratch right on, right where the corner meets the base right there, and I'll show you as soon as I get out of the way there. So that is simply just a reference point right there. Can you see that little scratch there? So that simply gives me a line to go by. Now I know I need to cut out my base right on that line right there, okay? So I'm gonna take my line that I etched on the back of there for the corner, and I'm gonna take my utility blade and I'm gonna put me a, a scratch on the back of that, being sure to not cut all the way through. And I, I'm just cutting partially the way through and I wanna stop right as my cove base starts to bevel down right there. You do not want to cut into that bevel, okay? So stop your cut just as it starts to bevel there. And then you can simply fold it back and you can see the bend in it right there. It creates a little trench or valley or opening you might say there in that so i'm going to take my utility knife here where i folded that back and cut it right there i'm going to take and just shave off that lip right there see how that's peeling that lip right off there that's exactly what we want and i'm going to do this on both sides and that's going to give us a nice v cut in the back of this okay and that's exactly what we want you want to watch and not to cut this top lip up top here you want to keep that on there so you can start cutting. There's a little lip on top of that. Start cutting just below that and end it. End your cut right at the bevel right there, okay? I'm going to shave that just a little bit more there. Okay, now I'm going to turn it around and do the other side of that cut the exact same way. Just shaving the corner off of that that I created by cutting and bending it back. Okay, so what that does, it cuts and creates a little V channel in my cove base whenever I straighten it back out, and that allows for it to make that bend really nice right there. Whenever it closes up, it will actually close that V together right there and make it one whole piece again. So that'll make a nice corner. Let's go ahead and stick it on the wall and see how it did. Okay, okay, so. Let's take it now and wrap it around the corner and see how that does. So as you can see, by creating that channel in it right there, that makes a nice clean corner. If you go too thin uh, trimming that out, what happens is you will actually stress this corner whenever you uh, bend it around like that and on a dark color such as black or a dark brown or something like that, it's actually going to stress it and stretch it and make it white right there. So be sure not to cut too too deep on it, but also you got to cut deep enough to where it will form your corner real nicely, okay? A lot of, a lot of times what will happen whenever you're putting your corners on there is uh, this right here. So what happens a lot of time whenever you try to make this four, uh, 90 degree corner, it will pucker out right here on the tops of the corner. So after I spread my adhesive, I will actually take and leave a little room here and put me just a little bit of hot melt right there and right there. So the hot melt will not permanently secure it. What, what I use that for is to hold it long enough because it'll hold pretty good for, I don't know, days or something like that. Eventually that hot melt glue will give loose, but by that time, the original cove base glue that we apply all in this area here is gonna be dried up and have a good hold. The cove base glue will take you uh, an hour, two hours, or three hours, uh, probably two or three hours to actually thicken up and get a really good bite to where it's not going to be pulling away. So the hot melt glue just simply holds this in place 
until the cove base adhesive gets a good hold on the corner. Now let's move on to the inside corners and there's actually a few different ways I might show on this and let you choose your preference on which way that you like to do your corners. So what a lot of guys will do, they will actually do their uh, inside corner. It's a lot like you do the outside corner and most people do do it like that. So I'll show you that first. Um, they're going to stick it in your corner right there and work it into the corner really good. And I want to take my, uh, I want to take my utility knife and mark, put just a little mark on it right there where the corner is going to be at. Boom. So I got me a tiny little mark on there and that's going to give me a reference point to make my cut. That is my tiny little notch right there that I put in the top of it. Now what I'm going to do with that is cut me a slice straight down that line right there. Okay, I got my little nick right there and my mark. So what I want to do is in order to get a nice straight line for my corner, I'm going to take me a factory edge of another piece of base and I'm going to line it right there. I'm going to butt it right up next to my uh, nick right there. And again, just like I did a while ago on the, on the outside corner, I'm going to do the same cut on the inside corner right here, okay? I'm going to just put me a line straight down through that, only this time I'm going over the toe all the way to the very end of it, okay? And that's going to allow me to break it open just like I did a while ago. So now I have the complete opening in the back of that, which lets it bend really nicely, gives me a nice corner in the edge right there. Okay, so this is the back mark right there. And right here where this starts to bevel, I'm actually going to cut me a V directly from the bevel start. I'm going to sink my knife through and cut a V out in it right there, just like so. Now we got our V cut in the bottom of our base here. Let's see how it fits in the corner. I want to press it firmly into the corner and it should be a really nice finished look like that right there, okay? Let's come in and get a real close look and see how that looks. Okay. So here you go. That is a really nice corner. There's only one thing that I don't like about doing my corners like this and that's why I do not do my corners like this. Right here at the top, you always get a little bit of an opening and uh, I got a way to prevent that. I'll show you in the next demonstration on your inside corners. This right here is another way, okay? So a lot of times people will just take and butt their corner right up to it flush there and then take their other piece instead of as I bent my last one back and cut the V out, this time since we only have half of our piece here, we're only going to take out half of our V and that's going to be on this piece right here. So we get just a little uh, notch in it just like that, which is to overlap our other toe on the other piece of base. Let's put it together and see how that does. Okay, so with, with the notch cut out right there, again, it's just going to go over this other toe right there. So it should slide together perfectly and make a nice little corner just like that. So this is number two, how to make another corner. And again, the only reason why I do not make my corners like that is because again you get your little notch right there in the top piece right there. That's the only reason why these two methods that I've done so far uh, I don't do them. It's because of that. The last method I'm fixing to show you will absolutely have no gap here completely sealed up all the way there. Let's check out that. So this last demonstration that we're fixing to do here is my preferred way of doing it. I think it just gives a cleaner, more finished, professional look out of the other two choices. So again, I'm going to take and just slide one piece up. I always will work from uh, right to left as I'm going around the room. So this is my right wall. I'm going to be working left. Now the only difference is it, it is going to butt up to it like the last one, but the only difference is the way I cut on this. And again, it's going to close up the gap we had at the top and the bottom is also going to be real nice. So let me show you what separates this from the other two traditions. So what I'm going to do with this piece right here to make it fit so nicely over that and uh, take care of the little gap that we got in the top of both of the other ways of doing it, I'm actually going to take and come around just a little bit this way and then down and make my notch at the bottom as I did in the other one. The only difference is the little 
nick that I do in the top right here allows this piece to set barely over that in the corner and completely conceals the gap in the top there. Okay, so again, I'm going to just give myself a tiny bit at the top right there. And I want to come over into the base about the thickness of the base because that's all we need in there. Again, we're just going to the thickness of the base. And then now that we are at the toe with our blade, we're going to do that little, little curve around like that. Now that should set right over the other base and this should fit right in that corner nicely. Let's take a look at it and see how it does. Okay, so uh, let's slide this in there and see how it goes right together there. Now, some people say, well, that allows, that causes your base to actually set up over and it throws them off level. Uh, not necessarily. I would like to get a really good close look at this and let's see if it does actually set it just a tad higher. Let's come in close and take a look. Okay. So I want you to pay attention to this little top piece right here as we slide the two together. And look how that just wraps nicely. It almost, it just fits in there like a glove. Now, as far as it being higher than this piece, not necessarily, okay? As, if anything, it's actually just a little lower on this side. But what it does, you got that little, little bit of a dog leg cut right there that just fits right in that void from the other one, okay? So it fits just beautifully, and you have absolutely no gap whatsoever in that top. It is a perfect finished look. To me, you're not going to get a better fit than this right here, okay? Okay, so I hope these little demonstrations here helped you. And again, if you need any supplies whatsoever, Tools for Flooring or EJ Welch, Tools for Flooring is definitely the online place. You, if you don't want to get out in the traffic and deal with them, shop online, have them deliver it right to your door. Fast shipping and free shipping, as a matter of fact, for orders over $75. And uh, if you have a local EJ Welch, go hit them up. Uh, hopefully these helped you out and will make you better, make you successful on your job with zero issues. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, FBSB's out. Thank you.